Welcome to the video. In this video, I want to share how I manifested multiple dreams into my reality in the last three years. And perhaps you also have these dreams that you're trying to pursue, you know, goals that you want to accomplish. But the thing is, when it comes to the manifestation, the law of attraction, achieving goals and whatever, you know, this, the journey that you're embarking currently or perhaps previously and then you're taking a break, you know, when you have this idea about law of attraction and now you have access to TikTok and everything and everyone talking about, oh, I manifested this, I manifested that. And then people start talking about sharing these experiences when they manifested a parking lot. And they're like, oh, I'm a manifester. I'm a manifestation king. I'm a manifestation uh, god. And all they do is manifesting parking lot. So today I want to share the very, very important steps because manifestation and law of attraction comes in layers. And then I will tell you how you can be the creator of your reality. I will tell you how to literally design and create your life better. So in order to give you tips and a step-by-step -step blueprint in this video, I have to take you back 20 years ago, which was me 10 years old. So when I was 10 years old, my mom, basically hand this book to me and then she said to me like, sure, you gotta read this. And I was like, no, because I can't read a book. I couldn't read a book back then and I really didn't have the focus. I was just ADHD. I just wanted to run around like a fucking stupid kid and I couldn't read a book. But she said to me like, this book is so thin and you can read it. And I looked at the book and it was like this thin, it was like only 40 pages. And that gave me a little bit of the confidence of actually finishing the book. And I was like, hmm, it's so 40 pages. And it seems like it's it's doable. So I give it a try and I did read a book. And this book is called, to be honest, I don't remember exactly, just a Japanese book in the back in the days. Um, it's called like a, a the power of the power of the words or like magic of the gratitude or something like, I think magic of the arigato or something like that. And sorry, I don't remember exactly. But so this book, teaches us the exactly how to use arigato, which is thank you in Japanese. What I've learned from this book was I have to say arigato in a past sense before the things happen. So for example, like tomorrow, you know, I want the sky to be sunny. Then I will say, thank you so much, arigato. It was so sunny day and it was beautiful and I enjoyed the sun. So or like I played basketball back then. So I was like, I was using this all the time, like, Thank you, arigato. I won the game. Like, I won the basketball game. Thank you, arigato. So I was using this arigato technique and in a past sense. And, you know, I was... When I'm into something, I was so fully focused and I'm so obsessed. So I was obsessed with this arigato technique and I was like, old, every day, whole day, like after reading this book, I'm like, arigato, thank you, universe, God. And then I was doing that when I was 10 years old. I didn't even understand that was a law of attraction. I didn't understand any of the idea behind it. It's just, oh, if I use Eligato in this way, I could use this magic. That, that's, that's me, you know, so hyped. And well, a couple of days later, I lost the game. <laughs> and there was a fucking rain, you know, pulling after uh, Arigato technique. And I was like, hmm, this shit doesn't work. So I kind of like, you know, as a child, I got disappointed because I really were, believed it, right? But it didn't work. And perhaps I didn't do it right. And as maybe, you know, my feeling wasn't as judged as um, right now. But either way, it kind of like made me disappointed and create this negative belief about the law of attraction and all these, um, you know, the things that I later on that I started learning again. So my start when it comes to the manifestations and all the attraction, energy, spirituality, as a Japanese uh, child, it wasn't a common topic to talk about energies and law of attraction manifestation and also had this experience which created a negative belief around this law of attraction or manifestation when I was 10 years old. And then I, you know, fast forward, and when I was like 20, 21 years old, I start traveling around and, you know, start uh, learning English and start communicating with people around all over the world. I've met multiple people that openly speaks about spirituality and an energy and law of attraction. I was like, wow, this is very interesting. I started to be exposed and that was me 
it was a great opportunity for me to relearn things, right? Because I had negative belief around it, and then I wasn't really around the people or the, the topic of the conversation anyway. So I start talk about it, and I start to learn and a practice on a daily basis, such as meditation and really visualization, and then start believing again because I realized something. I was like, maybe I didn't. Maybe I didn't do it right. Maybe there's something I needed to actually change or improve. So I start to meditate and I start to understand other aspects that connect with that practice, right? Because if you're low vibration frequency and if you're always stressed and if you're always like talking negative shit, then of course that doesn't help you to manifest or attract beautiful things, even though you do this practice out of your practice. Even if that practice that I've learned from this thin book was exactly what I needed to do if I my the rest of my thoughts are negative, of course it doesn't work. So I start to understand this like connection between all these, you know, important aspect when it comes to attracting beautiful things or manifesting your dreams and goals. There's a first shift happened in my life was I realized that I had a negative limiting beliefs that was holding me back. When I was 19 years, I started traveling around the world and I realized that be that becoming my identity, that was already part of basically myself. What I mean by that is I believed strongly and I was convinced that traveling around the world is my lifestyle. This is what happens all the time. Like I don't need to think consciously or try so hard to go abroad and to meet beautiful people and have an amazing experience. But when I'm ha when I talk to people who never done that, they think that it's very difficult. They have they don't have time. They don't have money. And I was like, Yo, bro, like your part time job. Like, what are you talking about? You don't have time. Like, you have shit tons of time. So I start to listen carefully what people think about the exact same belief, but from the different angle. Right, belief about traveling around the world, but my belief towards that, that that it's a lifestyle, like it happens all the time, like it's every year I'm traveling around the world, meeting amazing people, and it happens all the time, like this is me, this is my part of myself, part of my identity now. But these people didn't have the exact same belief around this traveling around the world, and I was like, wow, okay, so you can actually believe something, but some people believe it differently. And I start realizing that, okay, so I believe somehow the the energy is is like it doesn't feel like this is part of me these beliefs doesn't feel like it's it's shaping my identity so i started to let go and get rid of all these negative limiting beliefs around these energies and spirituality and then also law of attraction and i wanted to because i wanted to embody that i wanted to actually attract things and i wanted to actually feel so aligned with the energy and spirituality within me right so that's why i started to let go and i start to embody and then be aligned with the belief that i created and then shortly after the shift happens like the things start to come along and like my life start changing as a result i was a model at that time i was doing fashion model i did i wasn't really working at all like i was just a name right a label on my shoulder and that's it but when I started meditating and I started working on my beliefs and I let go and creating the new belief that actually positive and in align with myself, I started getting more jobs. And I did a campaign for Banana Republic. I did Dolce & Gabbana. And then I actually made a huge shift and I moved to Amsterdam and then all the kind of things happened. And a lot of good things started happening just, just like a pouring rain. And then people around me even changed how they communicate with me the way I communicate with myself changed. It's very, very interesting shift, right? That's how your life starts changing. You start focusing on yourself and your belief and everything else around, around you start changing based on how much change you've made internally. And that was a huge shift because change comes in layers. You know, your life, change, your life can change just like that, but it all comes as a layers, right? So that was my first shift. And the second shift actually happened in a couple of weeks later. I realized that there's a ceiling. You know, I feel confident, you know, I've made so many changed, but somehow there's a ceiling, like I can't break through. Like perhaps you resonate with that, perhaps you're feeling that, like you made a change before and then you came a long way, but there's a fucking ceiling and I don't know how to go through the breakthrough there. And then I, I felt exactly the same. And I 
you know, I took time and reflect because you have without reflecting, you can't realize that what you can improve without reflecting, you can't improve shit. That's why people make the same mistake and over and over and over because they don't reflect. That's a pure reason. So I learned that to reflect is very important in early age. So I start reflecting myself and reflecting the things that happened, reflecting the thoughts. And okay, so the why am I hitting the fucking ceiling over and over and over? And I realized this is so important. I wasn't the person that exists beyond the ceiling. So in other video, I talk about personality shifting. This is exactly how you break through the ceiling. So I want you to, after watching this video, I want you to go to that video. But so I, my personality and all my identity and the way I think about myself and my self image wasn't beyond the ceiling. So that's why I couldn't break through the ceiling. So I, I realized that, okay, so I have to be that person. I have to really embody and then believe that I am that person, even though my current reality doesn't show. For example, the um, amount of bank money, uh, the amount of the money in the bank or the followers or my social media or like the things that I'm doing. Because in January, the last January, I manifested um, the TEDx, right? So like that was actually my biggest dream, one of my biggest dreams that I wanted to be, be a speaker on a TEDx or TED since I was 20 years old or something like that. And I was like, yeah, someday I'll be there. And 10 years later, I manifested it. So my dream came true when I became that person, literally believed that I will be on the stage anyway. Like there was no worry, there is no like insecurity or fear. I was just like, yeah, I will be there. And, I, and it's just a matter of the time and the timing is just, you know, I am that person, I am already on the stage, that's how I feel. So when I became that person, the thing happens. Like that's it, like things start to happen when I became that personality, right? So when I broke through a ceiling and it feels so liberating, you feel like I can reach the sky. The most people struggle because they cannot be that person. They can't break through the ceiling because they don't feel like that then the best version of themselves, they don't feel and convince and believe what they're saying through affirmations and then things that, that they write on a journal because you have to be the person. It's almost like acting. I've done acting class for like a w one year. When I was in Tokyo, I was you know doing modeling. I wanted to improve my skill in acting and expressing myself. So I took the acting class for one year and that, that taught me so much. That taught me so much about self-consciousness. That taught me about... Um, really looking within and believing, like how to actually believe what you want to believe. Because essentially acting is not really pretending, but that's what I've learned. Acting is actually believing what's happening in front of you as a act, as a, as a script, but you believe that it's actually happening right now. And I was like, wow, this is very difficult. It's very difficult to believe something that it's, you already know that is act. So I have to believe this is me. I have to believe that life is what I am experiencing. And then once I change the shift, once I start believing that, okay, yeah, I am the best version of myself. I am who I want to be already. Even though my current situation or evidence doesn't show me that this is me, but I already feel like, I feel like there is alignment. And then once you feel aligned with your best self, then that's the second shift happens. I start to attract the things that I couldn't attract before, which is the bigger scale. Because of the personality wasn't, was aligned with the reality that I'm experiencing, creation of the past. But once I tapped in this future version of yourself in this current reality, it's almost like I'm pulling this future self into this current reality and then boom, I can attract things that I would attract in the future, which is the magic. So once you understand all your negative limiting beliefs is holding you back, and those are basically demons, those are pulling you back. It's almost like you're tied up on the wall and then you can't fucking move forward because of the limiting beliefs. So first you have to untie yourself, you have to let go and get rid of all these limiting beliefs and then create something new, which po which is positive, which is optimistic, which helps you to become the best version of yourself, right? And then once you shift that happens and then you start to experience in reality, 
And then you start to tap into this future energy and the future self and bring it to, it's almost like you bring that spirit into your current version. And now your personality is changing and shifting into this future, the best version of yourself, which is in the future, but you are so aligned and then you start to be that way. And then you can attract, you can tap into the energy that actually in, in the future line and which is the power, which is the magic. So the, a lot of people are really struggling and I understand that when it comes to the manifestation law of attraction and really achieving goals and becoming the best version of yourself because your life depends on your internal state. And I've experienced that multiple times. In multiple times, whatever you say, whatever you believe, it's essentially, it's your world. As I said, the traveling around the world, it is just a you know, simple action, right? But people believe in a different way, a different angle based on the past and based on their experience. But it doesn't necessarily what they want to believe. It's not necessarily like, this is how I want to believe and how, how, how I want to see the world. But it's just they see the world this way. They believe things this way because they are programmed. You are programmed by the society and by the parents. And then parents can leave you a trauma. Parents can leave you the generational pain that you have to somehow figure out and then heal. That's why you should join Live Your Life Like a Movie. This program, my coaching program, isn't just self-love, self-confidence, yay, like I feel good. It's actually the program, the online educational platform to expand your self-awareness and do the inner work and have a spiritual awakening and then go through the healing journey and understand how to communicate better. And so that not only just feeling good within, but understanding how to build a connection with the others. And then not only that, you also learn how to monetize the social media. And as they go through, they start to have something like, I want to do something. I want to be a yoga teacher. I want to do this. I want to start my business. I'm selling the jewelries. And then there are a lot of content creators. There are a lot of people who's uh, owning the business. And everyone has different goals and different vision. And that's the beauty of it. And let me tell you, I've done so many things alone. Perhaps you're a lone wolf like me. But there are limitations. You need a team. You need someone with you. You need like-minded people around you. And our community have like a couple hundred people and then they're thriving and we have Zoom calls every uh, week, twice a week. And we meditate together and then we share wins together. We accomplish together. A lot of people are accomplishing wins so many times. As somebody who actually accomplished uh, one, of, one of their dreams, you know, being on a TV show and starting a business literally changing life on a weekly basis it's insane so i'm really really excited to see you in a live your like movie if you're the type of person who believes in the spirituality who believes that you are spirit and you understand the energy and the law of attraction but you don't know how you can utilize it you feel like a stock you feel like that there's a ceiling and you want to get to the next level perhaps a business perhaps your self-development you want to attract the better things in life you want to stop this negative cycle and the shit happening to you in your life. So I will leave the link right there so you can have a look and then apply the coaching and my assistant Jason will talk to you on a Zoom call if we believe that we had a good match for working together. All right, looking forward to see you in the coaching. Peace out. Live your life like a movie.